Hallelujah. Now, <laughs> this is this going to get a little heavy because I ain't got much time left. I only got 19 minutes. Boy, I tell you, this is crazy. Anyhow, listen. So, so you see, you have this, this ish, issue where God only made one human being, a single person. Now, what, if, you, if you study the book of, of Genesis, I ain't got time to get into it, but I'll just show you quickly. It says, and the Lord took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden. That's Genesis chapter 2, verse 15. Write that down. Now, God begins to instruct this one human being. He's not talking to anybody else. He's talking to the one human being, it seems. And he said that this one single, he put him in the Garden of Eden. Everybody say Eden. Say it loud. Yeah. Loud, everybody. Yeah. Eden is important. Write the word Eden down. The word Eden is a Hebrew word which means spot. S-P-O-T. It also means presence. It also means open door. It's a powerful Hebrew word. It also means delightful spot. I wrote a whole book on this. Please get the book. It's called The Power of Praise and Worship. It's about that spot. The word Eden means what? Spot. Let me define it for you. The word Eden in Hebrew means the spot for the moment where the presence of God is an open door to heaven. Everybody buy this tape, please. You got to remember all this stuff. So the first place God took the male man is put him in Eden. What is Eden? The spot for the moment where the presence of God is an open door to heaven. That's why Adam never had to pray, never had to sing, never had to clap, never had to dance, never had to worship. Why? You do those to get into the presence. The guy was put in the presence. Oh, I wish I could be here for two more days talking about this stuff. It's so important to understand that the first thing God gave Adam was not a woman. He gave him his presence, which means the first thing a man needs is not a woman. He needs the presence. If you meet a man who shows interest in you, your first question should not be, do you love me? Wrong question. The first question is, where are you? First question, do you love his presence? Because if a man is in God's presence, he could never slap you. He could never curse you. And God's smart. The first thing he gave this male man was his presence. That means when you meet a guy, make sure you meet him in Eden. You see, some of you ladies are so dumb and stupid. You go out of Eden to find a brother and then try to drag him back into Eden. And the guy say, I ain't coming. <laughs> and you're wondering why you're depressed in church and your husband watching sports. Come on, clap your hands. You got to get rid of it anyhow. Get, get rid of it. Praise God. Get it out. If you meet a man who doesn't love to worship, run! Very important. He gave him Eden. Then God began to talk to this man. God said to the man, he said, he put him in the garden of Eden. First instructions. Work. <laughs> Everybody say it. Work. work. Say it again. Work. work. Say it again. Work. work. The first place he put him is in his presence. The first command he gave him is work. So, 
The first thing a man needs is not a woman. He needs a job. God wants you to meet the man in his presence and working. By the way, the word work is an interesting word. Uh, I, I did a whole study on this in my book called Releasing Your Potential. You can order it through the internet because we only got a few books out there. I got bought specifically for you. Make sure you get all of them. Okay, but this book is important. It deals with a whole four chapters on work. I studied the word work. The word work in Hebrew, in that verse. Are you ready for it? Write it down. Work, write the word work down. It, it, here's what the word means. It's the word ergo. E-R-E-G-O. And it means, I love it. It means to become. It's a deep word. First command to Adam. Become. Here's what God is telling Adam. He didn't, see, work is not something you do. It is something that you've discovered you're supposed to become and you start becoming it. So never meet a man and marry him who don't know who he is. Because he can't become what he doesn't know. In other words, you got to find an individual who already has a clear understanding of their purpose. In other words, this man has a vision for his life. God told Adam to become himself. To become the vision he sees. Why? Because he's going to later on bring him an assistant. I'm getting deep now. See, so a female was created by God to be a helper. But if ain't nothing to help with, you got yourself a frustrated woman. Come on, brother, sit up straight now. There are thousands and millions of frustrated, quietly depressed women in the church even because they're living with a man who ain't got no vision and they are full of energy. See, women come equipped because God made them to be helpers. That means they are sharp, intelligent, intuitive, wisdom leaking out of them. They are full of energy, ideas, and they're coming to help you and you ain't got nothing to do. And so, when a woman comes to a man who ain't got nothing to do, that means he ain't got nothing for her to help him with, she finally helps herself. She builds her own business, starts her own company, and then that dumb fool calls it aggression. I'm talking about her husband. A boyfriend says, you're so aggressive. She ain't aggressive, it's you who ain't got no vision. Oh, I'm talking to somebody. You so bossy. No, she ain't bossy. You lazy, brother. She ain't got nothing to put her energy on. That's why she's busy. Come on, ladies, go with me and shout a little loud. So when you want to marry a good man, your first question is what? Are you in the garden? Number two, are you working? Number three, where are you going? What's your vision? Let's not discuss love yet. Because love does not keep marriage together. Is this good stuff? I'm having a good time, I'm telling you. The third thing God told the man, he said, cultivate. Everybody say cultivate. Genesis 2.15. Cultivate. Everybody say cultivate. cultivate. The word cultivate means to bring out the best 
in everything around you. To cultivate means that you put fertilizer and you dig around it and you bring out the fruitfulness. In other words, cultivate means that you maximize the potential of something in your presence. God told the male, you are to be a cultivator. That means a real man does not oppress a woman's gifts. He makes room for them. He encourages them. He sends her to night school to get more knowledge and he pays for it. Oh, I'm talking to myself. He's a cultivator. He improves his wife. To cultivate means that you make the thing in your presence the best it could be. Cultivation. I love Jesus. You know, he's a, he's a good man. And, he, and he, he does have a wife. Her name is Ecclesia. She's a beautiful lady. Here's how he treats her. He says, husband, love your wife like Christ loves his wife. How? He cleanses her. He washes her. He improves her. He gives her the word. He moves every blemish, every stain, every thing, everything. And then it says he presents her to, not to his father, but to himself. In other words, a real man cultivates a woman, develops a woman, refines a woman, and makes her so awesome, he says, that's mine, brother. Look at that. That's mine. He presents her to himself. A real man improves a woman. God, I got seven minutes. Praise God. So when you meet a man who winks at you, don't be impressed. Start asking the questions of the first man. Number one, do you love God's presence? Number two, are you working? Number three, do you have a vision for your life? Number four, can you improve me, baby? Come on, clap your hands loud and shout amen in this place. It's a real man. My wife teaches conferences all over the world with me now. She speaks to millions of women, television. She speaks to thousands of women in conferences all over the different nations. But when I first met her, she was so shy, afraid to even talk to cats. Very, very, very quiet, introvert, you know. And, but you see, let me tell you men something. Listen to you guys, listen to me now. When God gives you an assignment, he gives you the material to use it on. Listen to me. So God will never give a male the woman he wants. That's why a male will never find the woman he really wants. She doesn't exist. God will only give him the raw material. Because his job is to what? So you men are always trying to find a perfect woman. The perfect woman only exists in your head. Your job is to work on the one that you chose and make her the woman in your head. When Jesus first met his wife, she was full of sin and dirt and muck and damnation and hellbound. He says, I still love you, baby. Come on, somebody. And he married her. And he took his blood and he cleansed them. And then he took every spot, every wrinkle, every blemish, every sin. He said, look at that. That's my baby. Come on, praise his name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's a real man. All the ladies say to me, cultivate me, baby, cultivate me, baby, cultivate me, baby. Come on, look at the guy next to you and say, cultivate me, baby. <laughs> Come on, praise him just for a couple seconds. Just give him glory. 
you get in revelation knowledge. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. Sit down, quick, sit down, sit down. I got four minutes. Oh, Jesus, have mercy. Shh. Calm down, listen. And after God gave the man cultivation responsibility, then he comes with the last one. He says, he says, guard the garden. Everybody say guard. He told the single man, you are to protect everything that comes into your presence. That's why God designed the male to be physically larger. His muscle mass is bigger. His bone structure is stronger. Not to hurt women, but to protect women. Clap ladies right there, praise God. When a man hurts a woman physically with his hands or his body, he is abusing the purpose for his strength. The safest place for a woman should be in the arms of her husband. The safest place for a daughter should be the arms of her father. But we got incest everywhere. protect so when you take a young lady out sir in this church or wherever you're from on a date she's supposed to be safe not sorry she went she's supposed to come back safe not pregnant You shouldn't use your strength to overpower your date. You use it to protect her from yourself. But Jesus was the protector of his wife, wasn't he? You want to hear him talk about her? Listen how he talks about her. He says, if anyone offends my wife, it is better for him to tie a rope around his neck and a stone on the other end and commit suicide. In other words, don't fool with my wife. I will kill you, he says. That's what I call protection. Don't entertain a man who doesn't open the door for you. Oh, no. And he opened the door because you're weak. He opened it because he doesn't want you to hurt your nails. Protecting you, baby. Last command, God said to the man, he says, and I command you, this is the last one now, he says, keep my command. Do not touch the tree. The last thing God gave the male, the single, was his word. Write it down. His what? Word. That means that the male had the word before the woman. And he had word before woman. By the way, I'm going to autograph all the books that you buy because my, my publisher told me my autograph is now worth $56,000. Ooh, that's nice. Listen, when you meet someone who winks at you, first question is what? Do you love his Hi, thank you so much for watching. Please remember you can support our work on our Patreon page and you get access to exclusive content and full videos. And please hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so and click the notification bell to be the first to receive newer content. Please don't forget to like and share this video with your friends to be a blessing to them.